Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the Moore's law and what are the different IC evolution stages and I will also explain the different technologies used to design the integrated circuits. So first and foremost thing was Moore's law. What do you mean by Moore's law? What I Moore's law stated that? So Moore's law stated that Moore's law. So according to Moore's law, according to Moore's law, the number of transistors, the number of transistors are getting doubled the number of transistors are getting doubled for every two years on an integrated circuit on an integrated circuit so According to Moore's law, Moore's law stated that the number of transistors are getting doubled. The number of transistors is getting doubled. That number is doubled for every two years. Okay, suppose in 2000, in 2000, the number of transistors fabricated on integrated circuit is 1 lakh. In the year 2002, it will be doubled to 2 lakhs. But the size of the integrated circuit is same in both the years. Okay, in 2002, we are having this much of size of integrated circuit with 1 lakh number of transistors. And in 2002, again, we are having the same size silicon substrate or integrated circuit. But now we are able to increase the transistors to double of the previous amount like 2 lakhs. What is the difference here? What is the difference from the 2000 year to 2002 year? That depends upon the size of the transistor. Okay. So that means the size of the transistor is scaled down to half compared to the two years back. Hope you understand. Okay. So we are having the same size area, but the number of transistors are increasing means the size of the transistor is getting reduced. The size of the transistor is getting reduced day by day. Okay, that's why we are able to increase the number of transistors on an integrated circuit within the same area. So, according to this Moore's law, we can draw this um, year versus transistors that are fabricated on an integrated circuit. So, the number of transistors that are fabricated on integrated circuit we are taking here and here like uh, the starting of this evaluation of this integrated circuit like 1970s to latest 2022 or 2020. So, the processor like it was started with 4004, 8008 and then 8080 processor, 8086 processor, 80X86 like 286186 and so on. So, microcontrollers and then Pentium processors later core i2, i7, i5, i7 and then i9 processors. So these are the different AMD processors are also there quad core processors, dual core processor like that we have different uh, technologies that we came across and those are developed on this uh, basis of this Moore's law. Now coming to the IC evolution, what do you mean by IC evolution? IC evolution is nothing but there are several stages of integrated circuits that are uh, coming across when you are building these integrated circuits. So first one is small scale integration. First evolution is small scale integration. So small scale integration, in short it is SSI, small scale integration and the second one is 
medium scale integration medium scale integration and next large scale integration large scale integration and then VLSI nothing but very large scale integration this is what we are studying now very large scale integration and next ULSI nothing but ultra large scale integration and the next one is joint scale integration which is GSI joint scale integration okay what is the difference among all these technologies among all these evaluations so small scale integration less number of transistors if you go higher number of transistors that is your MSI and beyond that SLSI beyond that VLSI after that ULSI after that GSA so if you see in 1970 to 1950 there is only a transistor okay there was no integrated circuit one transistor was there and it is one so 1951 to 1960 a discrete components like different different components are there so that we will be having some diodes fats and number of transistors are there later in the year 1961 to 1966 the small scale integration came into existence the small scale integration with 10 number of transistors use it using this small scale integration we can build logic gates and as well as flip flops Next in the year 1967 to 1971 medium scale integration was there with 100 to 1000 number of transistors 100 to 1000 number of transistors that are that we can fabricate on integrated circuit through which we can design counters and multiplexers and 1972 80 there was an integration called large scale integration with 1000 to 20,000 number of transistors through which we can design RAM like memory based architectures and microprocessors. From the year 1981 to 1990, the VLSI very large scale integration came into existence with 20,000 number of transistors to 1 million transistors. 20,000 number of transistors to 1 million transistors. And using this, we can create a 16 bit and 32 bit microprocessors. Later, in the 1990 year, this ULSA came into existence ultra large scale integration. This is 1 million to 10 million number of transistors using which we can create a graphic processor, graphic microprocessor. Now, 2002 nowadays means currently we are using this joint scale integration through which greater than 10 million number of transistors we can fabricate on a single silicon chip using which we can create these Pentium, dual core and i core processors and all these high end processors are coming with this joint scale integration. This is what the IC evolution tabler form that he gives the number of transistors and as well as the example of the corresponding evaluation although I am going to explain the processing technologies of VLSA what are the different processing technologies we can use in the creation of this VLSA integrated circuits uh, so we will be having different technologies like bipolar technology MOS technology bi CMOS technology and uh, like uh, silicon on insulator and as well as gallium arsenide technologies. So bipolar technology, we know this very well. We, when we were in second year of BTEC, we might have studied this bipolar technology. Like uh, we can say in bipolar technology, two different technologies are there again, TTL technology and as well as ECL technology. What is TTL? Transistor, transistor logic. TTL stands for transistor transistor logic and ECL stands for emitter coupled logic emitter coupled logic and the next one is MOS technology 
which is nothing but metal oxide semiconductor technology that means either it may be nmos technology or it may be a pmos technology or it may be a combination of these two which is a cmos technology combination of both the cmos and as well as nmos okay so using this nmos uh, what is the advantage of this nmos and pmos is less masking steps and denser and as well as less power similarly the cmos is also very low power consumption and it consists of both pmos and as well as nmos so that uh, we will be having high voltage swing logic another advantage of the cmos is high voltage swing logic and next one is a bi cmos technology using which uh, we can also create the integration uh, circuits this is bi cmos technology we see which is a combination of bipolar technology plus mos technology nothing but cmos technology another one is gallium arsenide gallium arsenide technology which is used for very high speed which is used for high speed applications and silicon on insulator silicon on insulator silicon on insulator silicon on insulator which is used for high temperature applications high temperature applications okay so these are the different uh, technologies processing technologies that we have we can create uh, the integrated circuit in the fabrication that means so we can go for the fabrication using any one of these uh, technologies so ttl technology ecl technology mos technology bi cmos technology high speed technology like gallium arsenide or high temperature applications like silicon on insulator uh, there are uh, suppose if you are going for high temperature applications then definitely we should go for this technology that means depending upon the area of application then we go for the corresponding uh, technology so if you say the delay versus power dissipation between the uh, different technologies and as well as the speed power performance uh, this is the see here on x axis i am showing the speed and power performance and on y axis it is showing the delay cmos technology is having somewhat higher delay compared to the bi cmos technology and ecl emitter coupled technology okay and gallium arsenide technology is having a low propagation delay and somewhat low power dissipation but cmos technology is having very low power dissipation among all these if you see on x axis which is having the least value cmos technology cmos technology is here okay though it is slow remember CMOS technology though it is slow compared to remaining technologies but the power consumption of this CMOS technology is very very low that is the main advantage why we go for the CMOS technology among the different other technologies okay coming to this ECL ECL technology is or we can say bipolar technology which is having very high power consumption but it is somewhat faster compared to the CMOS technology okay and if you take gallium arsenide which will be having moderate power consumption and the low power low propagation delay so likewise we are having uh, this uh, power dissipation and as well as delay depending on the specific application if we want to go for the high speed then uh, emitter couple logic is there if you want to go for low power consumption mos technology is there if you want to satisfy moderately both of these two then we can go for uh, gallium arsenide or uh, bi cmos so likewise we go for the corresponding application uh, area corresponding fabrication depending upon the application area okay so this is what the uh, ic evolutions moore's law and as well as the processing ic technologies thank you